I don't know how they do it, honestly. It's crazy to me. Wow, I feel like my face looks so fresh and pretty. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be playing with drugstore makeup. I was figuring out what I wanted to film and I feel like it's been a long time since I've done a full face of drugstore makeup. I know I always try to incorporate a lot of drugstore makeup here in my channel. It's one of my favorite things to try out. So I thought that it would be fun to test out some things that I've been dying to try that are all drugstore products. And then I also have some old favorites that I'm gonna incorporate into this routine as well. So first of all, we have some new palettes. These are new eyeshadow palettes from Essence. Um, there's also this Ludacris Lights collection from Milani, which has a few different products. That collection isn't like too brand new, but it's new to me. I also have some new things from Believe Beauty, which is the dollar store brand. And then I have some lip products from Koki Cosmetics that I'm wanting to try. So that's basically all the new stuff. And then, like I said before, I'll just use some of my old favorites to kind of complement the look. So let's just get right into it. I think I wanna start with eyes first, just because I've never tried these eyeshadows before. So if there's fallout or anything like that, I wanna make sure that I can wipe away the excess under the eye. Okay, let's get started. So these are the new eyeshadow palettes from Essence. They are all based off of the elements. So we have this first one right here, which is called the Fire Eyeshadow Palette. Oh my gosh, I just dug my nail into it trying to take the plastic cover off. Darn it, please ignore that. But here is the inside of the Fire Palette. You have a nice mix of mattes and shimmers and they are all warm tones, which is what I would have expected from an eyeshadow palette called Fire. Next up we have this one right here, which is called Earth. I'll try to be a little more careful with this plastic cover. Okay, here is the Earth palette. This one has mostly shimmers. There's one matte white eyeshadow and the rest are shimmers, which is kind of interesting. I usually like a mix of mattes and shimmers when it comes to an eyeshadow palette, but I guess it's not a deal breaker if it's a good palette overall. Next up is Air. This one excited me the most based off of the packaging. And then inside, it's just a bunch of pastel shades. I'm interested to see if these um, show up or if they're more like duochrome shadows because I own um, that Kat Von D palette that has like those duochromes and it kind of looks like that based off of just looking in the pan. There's not very vibrant colors in this palette, so I'm excited about it, but I'm also interested to see how it actually performs. Last but not least, we have this one right here called the Water Eyeshadow Palette, which is a bunch of blue tones. And here is the inside of the water palette. So I think this concept is really, really cool. I'm excited to dip into these. Um, we'll see how many I can actually test out today. I would say based off of my first impressions, I feel like the fire palette has the most variety as far as like mattes and shimmers go. The other three, hardly have any. The air palette has no mattes and then the water palette has two and then the earth palette has just one where the fire one has one, two, three, four mattes and then five shimmers. So I'm just kind of saying things out loud as I go. <laughs> That's usually how I do things when I'm trying out new products. I'm gonna go ahead and take some CoverGirl True Blend Undercover Concealer. I'm gonna use this as my eyeshadow primer today. I'm just using a clean fluffy eyeshadow brush to blend this out. Oh, I already did my brows off camera. Um, I decided to use the Milani Precision Brow Pencil. I love this brow pencil. It's such a good one from the drugstore. While I have this brush out, I'm just gonna go ahead and take what's left and kind of conceal between the brows because sometimes it's difficult to blend that area out with a foundation brush or sponge. So I'm just gonna take care of it now. Okay, I am immediately drawn to this shade from the Fire Palette to use as a transition. Actually, hmm. Maybe I'll take a tiny bit of this white shade in the um, Earth palette. I'm gonna use that on the very, very top of the eye look, right underneath the brow, just to keep that nice and clean. And then also I'm going to bring it down a little bit lower into the transition area so that the shadows that I apply in the transition blend super nicely above. Now we're gonna take that shade from the Fire palette. Um, they don't have names on them, so I'm just gonna point to the colors. And I'm gonna start working that into the crease and a little bit above as my transition shade. Oh, I realized I forgot to mention these palettes retail for $9.99 and there are nine shades in each palette. So it's like a dollar a shade, which is awesome. I'm just gonna go ahead and blend that same shade on the other eye. This is actually blending out really, really nicely. I might hop all over the place. Don't really know how this is gonna turn out, but oh well, we're just playing with makeup. I'm gonna go ahead and dip into this matte shade in the water palette. And I'm gonna start to blend this on the outer portion of the eye and then work it up into the crease once there's a little bit less product on the brush. 
Right off the bat, I'm noticing that I wish every palette had at least two mattes in them because that's always how I start out an eye look. I never do a full look with just shimmers. If you were in a situation where you were using multiple palettes, it wouldn't be an issue because you could just use a matte from one palette and then shimmers from whichever palette. But usually when I purchase an eyeshadow palette, I want the option of both, so. That's a really pretty blue shadow. It's definitely more of a muted, cool-toned blue. So there's a lot of gray in this particular shade and it's actually really flattering, I feel. It's also nice and soft. So even though I'm kind of building up the color, it doesn't feel like I'm gonna go overboard with it, if that makes sense. It's really nice and soft and wearable. Okay, um, let's see here. I really do want to try something in this air palette. Of course, I'm gravitating toward this shade right here. I just, I like what I like, you guys. I'm gonna take this on my finger and I'm hoping that it will show up on the eyes. I'm just gonna go ahead and press this on the inner portion of the lid. Okay, yeah, it's showing up, but not as much as I would have liked it to. Anytime I see this type of duochrome lavender eyeshadow, I feel like I always buy the palette. So I own a lot of these types of eyeshadows and the other ones that I own are definitely much more pigmented. I mean, granted it's not Essence, so you know it's not like a $10 palette usually. Well, mm, I kind of take that back. The brand Profusion, which makes those massive palettes for $10. I don't know how they do it because the quality is so good. There are a couple of these types of shades in those palettes and um, they're much more vibrant. I had the highest hopes for this Air palette because it was so my vibe with the color palette, but this is like the fourth layer and it's just okay. Like it's obviously showing, but it's taking a lot of effort to build it up. I'm just gonna take my brush again and kind of buff out the edges. I'm dipping back into the water palette and I'm gonna mix the two matte shades and I'm going to attempt to create a little bit of a blue liner just along the outer third of the top lash line. Okay, I think I wanna use one of these Milani Ludacris Lights um, glitter eyeshadow toppers. They come in three different shades. We have number 110 Lollapabluza, which is this really pretty duochrome blue. Then we have the Pinkaroo, which is this really pretty one. And then we have um, Peachella, which is a little bit more peachy. I'm definitely leaning toward Lollapabluza for meh. Maybe I'll mix a little Pinkaroo on top. I don't know, we'll see. I've actually never tried this formula, I don't think. If I remember right, I think this is an existing formula from Milani. And these are just new colors. Okay, I'm gonna put that right over top of that purple shade and then just gently press this into the eye with my fingers. Sometimes with these liquid glitters, blending them out with your finger is a good idea and then other times it's not, just depending on the formula. But I think it's working as it dries down a little bit more. It seems to be sticking to the eyelid more than my finger. Okay, we have the first layer down. I'm just going back over and kind of making that shape a little bit more precise along the crease. Ooh, that's really pretty. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing on this eye. Okay, I'm having a lot more fun with these. I'm gonna go ahead and take the Pinkaroo eyeshadow and I'm gonna put this just on the center of the eyelid just because I want another color there. And same kind of idea, I'm just gently pressing this down until it dries. It takes a minute to dry, so I'm just gonna keep pressing until it gets dried down and then that way the glitter on my finger ends up adhering to the eyelid. I think that's so pretty. Okay, same thing on this eye. Okay, once that's dried and on the lid, I'm gonna take what's left on the finger and just kind of press that over the outer portions of the eye just so that the glitter kind of travels toward the edge and there's not this stark matte shade sitting there. I'm gonna try something with the third shade, Peach Ella, because I'm having fun with these glitters. I'm gonna put a little bit of that on the back of my hand and I'm gonna take a small precise brush and I'm gonna use that to kind of highlight the inner crease a little bit. This brush might not be precise enough, but oh well, I'm still going to attempt it. Yeah, I definitely should have used a more precise brush because that started to look really messy. Oh well, too late now. <laughs> I'm going back in with whatever was left on the brush that I used for that blue liner or blue eyeshadow, I should say. And I'm just kind of touching that up a little bit. I'm gonna go in with my Maybelline Lash Sensational Mascara. And I'm just gonna layer that up on just the top lashes for now. Okay, so I'm trying to dust away any fallout that got under the eyes. I ran out of makeup wipes, so I just used a tissue instead. 
<laughs> and there's still glitter on my face, but that's okay. Okay, so I think this is a new product to me. They recently sent this to me and I don't think I had tried it before. This is from Believe Beauty. It's the Radiantly Primed Face Primer. I'm gonna go ahead and apply some of this to the face. I'm gonna go ahead and blend that out with a foundation brush. I don't know if I applied too much or not. No, I think that's enough. I don't think it's too much either. It said on the back of the packaging to let this sit for one to two minutes before applying foundation, so I'm gonna do just that. This is definitely giving my skin a really nice glow, um, but it's not overly sparkly at all, and it actually doesn't feel overly hydrating either which is kind of nice because when it comes to glowy products, sometimes if it's super glowy and super hydrating, on me at least, and on my skin type, it can tend to look greasy by the end of the day. So this texture feels really, really nice. I'm just gonna let it sit for a minute longer. And then for foundation, I'm gonna be using my ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Tinted Moisturizer. Do a couple pumps of that directly onto the brush. I normally apply it to the back of my hand, but I have glitter on the back of my hand, and like I said before, I ran out of makeup wipes. So we're just rolling with it. I'm just applying this all over the face evenly, and then I'm going back over everything with my sponge just to make sure that there's no brush lines. So this ColourPop foundation or tinted moisturizer obviously does a really great job at evening out the skin tone. It's not necessarily like a full coverage foundation, but you can build the coverage. So instead of adding more foundation, I'm just gonna use a more full coverage concealer. So I'm gonna be using my CoverGirl True Blend Undercover Concealer. I'm gonna take the shade Classic Ivory for over blemishes, which I have quite a bit today. So I just dotted that over problem areas and I'm blending it out immediately with my sponge. This formula tends to dry pretty fast, so I like to work quickly instead of applying it all over my face and then blending it out one by one. I like to just blend out the blemishes first and then blend out the highlighted areas right after. For under the eyes, I'm gonna use the shade um, Natural Ivory, which is a bit lighter for brightening, so this is what I'm gonna use under the eyes and also in the T-zone. And I'm using a brush to blend out first, and then I'm pressing everything in with that same exact sponge. Now that that's blended out, I'm just gonna take my Wet n Wild Photo Focus Translucent Powder, and I'm gonna use that to just set the under eyes and the sides of the nose, smile lines, and the chin, and then also down the center of the forehead and the tip of the nose as well. And then um, let's go ahead and finish up the eyes. I'm gonna go back into the Essence Water Palette and take that kind of grayish matte shade, and I'm going to use this along the lower lash line on the outer third just to kind of connect that shape to the top lid. All right, I'm gonna go in with the Milani Ludicrous Lights eyeshadow. Um, again, this is Lala Pabluza. And I'm just gonna take that across the inner third of the lower lash line. Well, I guess I'm kind of going across maybe half of the lower lash line. And then I'm taking the Pinkaroo shade and applying that right over top of the blue shade in the center, just like we did on the top lid. And then I'm gonna take the Peachella shade. I'm gonna use that one as my inner corner highlight and connect it right here on the lower lash line. I'm gonna let that dry for just a second. I think I want a bright waterline, so I'm gonna take my Wet n Wild Brow Highlighter. You guys, I'm starting to see this disappear online. I'm assuming that means that they're probably discontinuing this, which makes me so sad because it's so good and it's so affordable. I'm gonna go back into the Fire Palette and dip into that matte warm brown. I'm gonna tap off the extra and I'm going to buff this out underneath the lower lash line just a bit to add a little bit of warmth and to tie in the colors from the top lid down on the lower lash line. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and take that same mascara and just apply it to the lower lashes. Okay, so now that that's on, I'm just going over the under eye area with my damp sponge. It's not super sopping wet, but it's just damp enough to kind of soften the powder under the eye. Let's see, I'm gonna add some bronzer. This is one of my favorite drugstore bronzers. It's from Milani as well. It's the um, Silky Matte Bronzer, and I have mine in the shade 01 Sunlight. I'm gonna take this and just warm up the complexion. And I'm using a pressing motion because I didn't use any powder on the outside of the face. So I'm not wanting to remove any of the coverage, especially since I didn't use a super full coverage foundation. I just used the tinted moisturizer. So I'm just being gentle to press this into the skin along the forehead up into the hairline. All right, once I feel like the bronzer is placed where I want it, I'm gonna go back over with the foundation brush that I used and just gently press along the edges of the bronzer. I feel like that always helps to mesh powders with the creams underneath. 
when I take the time to do this step. And then I always want to go back in with my sponge and just kind of do the same thing where I press everything back down into the skin. I'm going to wipe off any foundation that got on the lips. It's just kind of bothering me. Um, Belief Beauty sent me some new cream blushes and I've been really into cream blushes so I wanted to try this. Here's what the cap looks like. This is the Color Me Cream Blush in the shade Doll Face and I feel like it's going to be perfect for this look. I'm gonna take the bottom of my sponge and just go directly into the pan. And then I'm going to bounce this onto the cheeks. I left most of the cheeks unpowdered so that I could layer up this cream. But even then, on the areas that do have a bit of powder, it's blending over top really, really beautifully. And it's so pigmented. You guys, I honestly don't know how Believe Beauty does it. Again, if you don't already know of them, they are exclusive to Dollar General and everything that they make is under $5 or $5 and under, I can't remember. Either way, super, super affordable and the quality is insane. I get stunned by the quality of their products every single time I try something like that. It was so beautiful and it blended beautifully and it's so super pigmented. I don't know how they do it, honestly. It's crazy to me. Wow, I feel like my face looks so fresh and pretty. Okay, so Milani also came out with these duochrome highlighters with the collection. There's three different shades. I think for my skin tone, this one's probably gonna be my best bet. And even then, I'm not really sure how this is gonna look on the skin. It could ruin the look, but I still wanna try it. It looks so pretty in the pan, so I'm gonna give it a whirl anyway. Okay, so I just swatched it on the back of my hand and it's literally like the same glitter as that eyeshadow. Um, so it's definitely a glittery highlighter right off the bat. Let's go ahead and see what this would look like on the cheeks. Okay, yes, it's straight up glitter, which if that's what you're looking for, it's really, really pretty. It kind of reminds me a little bit of um, like the Fenty Beauty Diamond Balm. If you've ever tried those, those are definitely straight up glitter highlighters too, but I love the Fenty Beauty ones. Um, this is more of a pink, so I think it's really fun, but definitely not like an everyday highlighter. You could also probably use this as an eyeshadow if you wanted to, which is probably how I personally would wear these on more of an everyday basis. I think they're really pretty regardless. And normally I would take like a not so sparkly highlighter and go down the center of my face, but I kind of like how my makeup looks, so I'm just gonna leave it as is. I'm gonna go ahead and try out a new shade in the Koki Cosmetics Lip Veneers. I don't think these are new products to them. I personally have never tried them, but they sent me a bunch of shades along with two of their newest shades. So these are the two new shades that they just launched. Um, this one right here is called Kismet. I don't know if it's Kismet or Kisme. And then we have Dynasty. I felt like this shade would be really nice with the products that I was kind of eyeing today. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this all over the lips. Okay, so this is definitely very pigmented and very creamy as well, but it does have a bit of that glossy finish to it. So I think the name Cream Gloss, or that's the description of the product, I guess, I think it's a really good fit for what this product actually is. I'm gonna go with the NYX um, Suede Matte Lip Liner in the shade London, and I'm gonna go over the lip color just on the corners, just to kind of bring some subtle dimension to the lip color. Okay, I'm just touching up the brows a bit and then we'll talk about my first impressions on these products. I guess before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Flower Beauty Seal the Deal Luminizing Setting Spray just on the outer portions of the face. And then I'm gonna set the brows with my Glossier Clear Boy Brow. Okay, so here's the final look. I definitely feel like it's very fun. And let me tell you what I'm initially super, super excited about. I love the way my complexion looks, so I'm excited to continue to use the Believe Beauty Radiantly Primed Face Primer. Again, I liked how it was glowy but not sparkly, and it was lightweight um, but not drying. It wasn't too hydrating either, so I'm excited so far, just based on my first impressions of the formula, I'm excited to use this. I'm kind of bouncing all over the place. Okay, these Essence eyeshadow palettes, I feel like I created a pretty decent base eyeshadow look, but honestly, you guys, at this point, I'm so familiar with makeup in general. I try so many different eyeshadow palettes from the drugstore specifically. I don't feel like these are the best at the drugstore. I feel like they get a 10 out of 10 for packaging and for concept, but the formula just wasn't what I was expecting, what I was hoping. I do feel like the Fire eyeshadow palette, if there was one, 
where I felt like the mattes at least really performed amazingly well, it would be this one. Plus I feel like this one has the most variety, but even then, if I'm being 100% honest, I feel like I could find another warm eyeshadow palette that has even more variety and even more pigment and blendability. So those were a little bit of a letdown for me personally, especially this one because, oh, you guys, could you imagine? This just had the prettiest packaging, but I guess I only tried one shade in here, but it kind of seems like all of them are pretty similar. Maybe that one would have been pretty as an inner corner highlight. Maybe I should give it another whirl. Yeah, I guess I'll have to try them again sometime, but based off my first impressions, I'm not head over heels in love with them. The Milani Ludicrous Lights collection, on the other hand, is something that's totally my speed. I definitely love the eyeshadow toppers. You do have to spend a little bit of time patting them onto the eyelids if you want more of that scattered glitter look. I guess if you do what I did on the lower lash line, you wouldn't have to worry about pressing that out. It would distribute on its own. But I really love these three shades. They're three that I will totally use over and over again. So I'm super excited about those. I can't wait to keep using them and I feel like they're the star of the eye look. I do feel like I got a little bit messy trying to do the inner crease, but honestly, I feel like it's because of the brush that I use, so. I will remember that for next time. Um, the Believe Beauty Cream Blush, it's so pretty. I'm really excited about this. They also sent me this shade right here, which is so fun for summer. This is called Tropical Sunset. Look at this color. I am so excited to try this. Maybe I should try it right now. Yeah, maybe I will, even though it's the end of the makeup look and I don't know if you'll be able to really even see the color. Oh yeah, you can see it. It's layered on top of the pink, but still. Ooh, that's such a pretty shade. Believe Beauty, I'm telling you, they make some really incredible stuff. So these cream blushes, I'm super excited about, especially for summertime, like I was saying, I've been super into cream blushes and the Fenty ones have been some of my favorites. I'm interested to see if these end up sticking into my routine, just like the Fenty ones do. I'm super pumped about those. And also I really, really liked the formula of these lip veneers from Koki. This is my first time trying this formula, but I really, really like it. It initially felt a little bit on the sticky side, but once it's set down, it's not too bad. It definitely is a little more sticky than some other lip gloss products that I have, but I really, really like the shade of this one specifically. And I'm excited to try the other shades too. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot. I have three glosses from that Ludacris Lights collection as well. I think I'll try just this peach yellow one. I'll just kind of press this in the center of the lips. I'm looking super duper sparkly today. <laughs> I'm just gonna press that in. Okay, those are really pretty. They're definitely more subtle than I initially thought. I mean, I did layer it on top of something a little bit more opaque, but I think that really amped up the shimmer. Ooh, I'm actually excited about these. I wasn't as excited about these as I was like the eyeshadows, but that made my lips look super, super juicy and shiny. So I am actually excited to continue to use that. Um, speaking of the Ludacris Lights highlighters, the duochrome highlighters, um, it's definitely something that's very out there. It's very glittery. If you're not someone who wants glitter on the face, you're not gonna like these. If you're someone who does on special occasions even, you probably would enjoy these. I even feel like I would use these mostly as just like a big eyeshadow. I'm gonna try it. I'm just gonna take a little bit of that shade and tap it onto my eyes. Yeah, I definitely feel like you could use this as an eyeshadow if you wanted to over top of any cream shadow or any powder shadow even, and it would just give you that kind of duochrome glitter effect. So that's probably how I will use them in the future. It's fun on the cheeks, but it's a little bit extra for me personally. I do still love sparkly highlighters like the Fenty Beauty Diamond Bomb, but there's something about that silver glitter that's even more wearable than an actual pink glitter on the face. So those are my thoughts about all the new products that I tried. That's everything, right? Yeah, okay, overall I feel like it was pretty successful. Definitely my favorite things are the Believe Beauty products, the primer and the cream blush the Milani eyeshadows, and then I am excited about the lip products as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Let me know if you guys have tried any of these products recently in the comments down below. You guys know how much I love to discover new amazing things at the drugstore, and I definitely feel like some of these things are incredible. I have really, really high hopes for a lot of the things that I tried today. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel and for watching my videos. If you're new here, hi, my name is Ali, and I would love for you to join the family. You can do so by hitting the subscribe button. And if you're already a subscriber, but you want to be notified on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, click on the bell after you subscribe and you'll get a notification every single time I post. That's it for me today. I love you all so much. I hope you're staying safe and staying healthy and I will see you all in my next video. Love you. Bye.